Hi, folks. Welcome to the August Security Talks. Today, we're going to learn how we can detect threats in our cloud environments with Security Command Center. My name is Tim Peacock. I'm the Senior Product Manager for Threat Detection here at Google Cloud, uh, celebrating four years uh, on this group and here at Google. Uh, when I'm not detecting threats as part of Security Command Center, you can also find me co-hosting the Cloud Security Podcast by Google. Today's talk is going to be a look at some of the new and improved threat detection capabilities inside of Security Command Center Premium. Security Command Center is a four-part service. We think of it as providing first a pillar of visibility to security teams. They say you can't manage what you can't measure. You certainly can't secure what you can't see. On top of that visibility across your cloud estate, we build risk management in the form of both misconfiguration of cloud resource detection, as well as vulnerability detection with a lot more coming soon in that area. On the threat detection side of the house, which will be the focus of today's talk, uh, we've got you know a lot of investment to detect when bad guys do bad stuff, despite all of the investments we make on the left-hand side of the house, preventing bad things. Finally, we know that it's no good securing your environment if you can't prove to your audit and compliance teams that you've done so. So all of the misconfiguration work inside of SCC is pivoted against leading compliance standards, and it's easy to grab that data and export it out. Before I dive into the demo, I want to give you a quick overview about how we think about threat detection in cloud. If you've read our blog post on threat detection in cloud, parts one and two, some of this may seem familiar, but what I want to run you through as a security professional, if you haven't read that, is there's really good news and bad news when it comes to threat detection in cloud. The good news is that your needs as a security professional coming to cloud, they don't change. You still need to keep your data confidential, you still need to run software you trust, and you still need to keep your systems available. When it comes to MITRE ATT&CK, your MITRE ATT&CK tactics don't change, but the tactics and procedures that adversaries use to achieve those goals change dramatically. And we did ourselves a bit of a disservice three, four, five years ago back when we went to in-person events and we all had hats and pins and buttons and shirts and uh, tote bags that said things like, oh, the cloud is just someone else's computer. The truth is the cloud is a lot more than someone else's computer. Uh, there's a lot more to it. You think about something like a cloud function, where's the somebody else's computer in a cloud function? Now, I think of the cloud as having this kind of six layer model. And like all models, it's a lie, but like many models, I, I hope it's useful. Uh, when I think about defending the cloud, I think things really start all the way on the left-hand side here with protecting our identities in our identity policy configuration. Those identities speak to a common API, which in Google Cloud give us unique opportunities for instrumentation. That common API enables and manages a set of managed services, things like BigQuery, uh, where we can understand those API requests on a very deep level being the service provider. There is still a network and there are still opportunities for network-based threat detection. So what you know about network-based threat detection doesn't change necessarily, but how you achieve those goals of network-based threat detection and instrumentation may change pretty dramatically in cloud. And with a you know, global shift towards encrypted traffic, your opportunities for deep inspection might be going away in the near future. We do still have compute in cloud. It's not just someone else's computer. Uh, we still have persistent kernels, and we'll talk about some of the really exciting work we're doing through virtual machine threat detection to detect threats in compute uh, later on in this talk. Finally, on top of compute, we have Kubernetes, both as an orchestration layer and as a runtime environment. Uh, past security sessions have looked in a deep way at the work we're doing with container threat detection. So we're not going to talk a lot about that today, but I do encourage you to go check out uh, our past sessions talking about uh, Kubernetes to understand what we're doing for threat detection there. Finally, before we dive into the content, I want to touch on what I call the Anna Karenina principle of cloud. Now, I was, listeners, a political science major in college, so I get to say weird things like that. And what I mean by that is Tolstoy opens that book by saying, all happy families are alike. Every unhappy family is different in its own way. Every cloud is different in its own way. When it comes to detecting threats and even misconfigurations in a particular cloud, you want, as a security professional, the highest fidelity threat detection or misconfiguration detection for that cloud and its particularities. What you know about an identity model on AD does not translate one-to-one -one with an identity model on GCP. Similarly, what you know about detecting data exfiltration out of AWS does not translate one-to-one -one with detecting data exfiltration out of GCP. As an industry, we have a never-ending drive towards standardizing our response practices, standardizing how our teams operate, but that doesn't mean we should have a never-ending drive towards standardizing how we detect the things that feed into our team's triage queue. 
So as we go through the demos in a second, you'll see a couple of examples where we're doing very particularized to GCP things. And I encourage you as security professionals to think about where does standardization need to happen in your stack and where do you want to lean into the most relevant tool for the job at hand. So with that, let's turn it over to our demo. We're going to walk through a pretty typical example of how an organization can suffer a leak of credentials, have those credentials get used, how the adversary can achieve some of those goals, and how Google Cloud helps automatically detect and security teams respond to those issues. So with that, here we are, homepage of Security Command Center. This is the view for your organization when you first open Security Command Center after you've onboarded, had it detect a few things. Here we are in a pretty typical looking organization with a few findings of different types. We're gonna immediately pick into this account has leaked credentials finding. This finding is a partnership with GitHub. And like I said at the start, one of the most common ways organizations get into trouble with the security of their environment is the leak of an access credential. In this case, uh, GitHub actually let us know in pretty close to real time that a service account key was checked into a public GitHub repository. Now we can pick into the details and we can see a few things here in this JSON tab that let us understand exactly what's going on. And now we can scroll down and scroll down and few, find a few things that are going to really help uh, an engineer or a security uh, operations person understand what's going on. In particular, uh, the project identifier to understand where in the organization this leak occurred, what the name of the compromised account is, in this case, test leaked SA, and a little bit more detail about what's going on, as well as the particular key identifier so that the user can understand uh, exactly which key for that account leaked, as well as the URL where that uh, key was posted, in this case, into a project owned by Google Cloud Platform. Now, let's imagine the case where an adversary gets access to that key before anybody else does, and they log in from a new location. I'm using as an example today for that detection of persistence new geography, actually a finding that was generated about my account uh, a couple weeks ago when I was traveling in the UK. You can see that in this case, our caller IP geo region code is US, uh, but in other cases, I was uh, calling in from other places. We can again, pick into the JSON, see a little bit more detail about what's going on here. Uh, in this case, the typical geolocations are GB. And now this actually detected not only that I had been uh, over in the UK, but that I came back to the US and then did something else. So this is a pretty cool finding showing uh, the ability of event threat detection to trace our uh, activity back and forth across the pond uh, shows that I was able to get over and visit a few customers. Now, uh, one of the things that we observe adversaries do when they compromise an account, particularly a service account, is look up what the capabilities are on that service account. Now, you can imagine an adversary who gets their hands on one of these credentials starts to say to themselves, oh, what can my new toy do? And one of the common ways to understand that is to look up the IAM policy for that service account as that service account. Now, it's quite normal for human users to say, oh, what am I capable of? Do I have the permissions I need to do my job today? On the other hand, the typical life cycle of a service account is that it's created for a particular purpose, put into use to do that purpose, and the service account never has reason to introspect its own capabilities. We do occasionally see this happen with Terraform jobs, and the team has done quite a bit of work to take out false positives related to Terraform jobs. But in this case, what we see is actually an adversary looking up the IAM policy of that service account. Now, this is pretty typical adversarial behavior. But say that these findings are not enough for a security engineer at your company to be convinced that something is going on with that service account. We can look at yet another detection of unusual activity on that service account. In this case, uh, we have a persistence new API method detection. What this looks for, this is actually a service uh, within Security Command Center that uses what we call UUEBA, User Entity Behavioral Analytics, one of those acronyms only Gartner could love, that looks to profile the set of behavior observed for a service account. And now a typical service account lifecycle is to do what you're going to do within your first, say, seven days of service account existence. If a service account starts to do new things 
after those seven days is usually a sign that something has gone wrong with that service account. In this case, uh, we see that this thing has started to touch this vulnerability detection settings uh, well after it was established. We can again pick into the JSON, get a few more details out of the finding uh, and see some interesting things. So in this case, uh, it was actually editing uh, some things within the security center settings. So that's that's pretty unusual that a service count would start touching security center settings after uh, it hadn't previously done so in its existence. Again, an example finding from inside my engineering org. But let's say that this adversary has now gotten access, uh, like we said in the start, to that credential, discovers the capabilities of that credential, and discovers that that credential not only has access to data, but has access to update a VPC service control. Now, VPC service controls are powerful GCP platform capabilities to limit or constrain your environment. And these are very useful for central cloud center of excellence teams, central security teams, posture teams, getting set up in Google Cloud and saying, thou shalt not do X. And in this case, we have a service perimeter that prevents data from leaving an environment. Now, if I'm an adversary who's hoping to cause data to leave an environment, that would be kind of inconvenient. Uh, but fortunately for our example bad guy here, he's been able to modify that VPC service control. And now we detect that as a uh, MITRE tactic defense evasion, and we can pick into the details to understand exactly what was modified in this case. And so here we've got the service uh, perimeter, and it was modified to no longer protect a particular asset. And so this is a really great uh, look at how Event Threat Detection Security Command Center really able to get into the detail of how Google Cloud works and how the different capabilities of Google Cloud relate to each other. We always say that each cloud is different from the others. And when it comes to defending a particular cloud, we know that security teams want consistency and want centralization. But security teams have already achieved consistency and centralization in their alert triage queues through their SIM, SOAR, or other tooling. We believe the most important thing for security teams is to have the capabilities that best understand the particularities of a particular cloud. And as you can see with this particular finding type, this is a case where ETD and Security Command Center really understand the particulars of Google Cloud and can detect when a VPC service control is weakened to have a protection removed from that organization. So now, imagining that that protection was removed, what is the adversary able to do? In this case, the adversary was able to move data out of that environment. They took it from this test bucket and ex uh, they took it from this project, this Cloud SQL Experiments project, and exfiltrated it to this test bucket. Now, in this case, we've detected that data has moved from a Cloud SQL service out to a bucket. Now, in the past, you've seen demos from ETD and Security Command Center Premium detecting data exfiltration out of BigQuery. Here, we are publicly talking about for the first time, moving data out of Cloud SQL. We know that users bring a lot of important data to Google Cloud and that users trust Google Cloud to protect that data. It's not always the case that users configure things to be fully locked down. And when things are not fully locked down or when a defense was weakened by an adversary who got access to a highly privileged account, we're really happy to be able to help users detect in very close to real time when that data moves out of their environment. Now, let's say this adversary is not satisfied merely moving data around and weakening controls. Let's say they want to go a step further and find another way to monetize in that cloud environment. Well, by far the most common way we see advertise, uh, adversaries monetizing a cloud environment is with the use of crypto mining. Now, crypto mining is a super straightforward thing that adversaries can do in a scripted and automated manner. And because it's so easily done so quickly through automation, this is really one of the things that we see as the proverbial canary in the coal mine for discovering that an environment is not fully secure. And so to that end, we've actually released multiple capabilities inside of Security Command Center Premium that look for this type of behavior. One of those capabilities relies on our ability to understand flow logs and cloud, SQL, uh, cloud DNS logs in close to real time. In this case, a malware bad domain finding that we generated the other day, this one was actually looking for uh, our test domain, our test indicator, and we can scroll into the details and see our indicator domain is our etd malware trigger.goog. We have a test domain registered so that users of the service can verify and to end that things are working. 
But in the adversarial case, we would see access out to something like a mining pool domain. And so that's a great way of detecting from the network layer that a bad guy has started running some crypto mining. Now, let's say they are perhaps stealthier than that and they're using a custom domain. That's one of the reasons we release an additional capability through a service that we're calling Virtual Machine Threat Detection. Virtual Machine Threat Detection, as I previously mentioned in the introduction, uses our possession of having the integrated end-to-end computing stack and our ability to instrument the hypervisor to detect, based on memory analysis, the execution of a crypto miner in close to real time. In this case, we're using our ability to run Yara rules against the contents of memory. We've got multiple Yara rules triggering on this process of LOL funny name. In this case, uh, the adversary has clearly chosen the opportunity to manipulate the binary that they were running. We weren't just looking for binary names. We were looking inside the process to look for the kinds of routines that are involved in cryptocurrency mining. So not only are we able to detect at the network layer when tra traffic is going out to a crypto mining domain, we're also able to, based on memory introspection enabled through the hypervisor, detect the proof of work routines that crypto miners use to make their money. So having detected first the compromise of the account, second, having detected the adversary's efforts to weaken controls and move data on the environment, third, detected their attempts to monetize the environment through crypto mining, we're left with the adversary establishing their persistence in the environment and how they achieve that. And so looking for that in cloud takes a lot of forms, and those forms are not necessarily the forms we expect to see on-prem. Establishing persistence in an instance, for example, in the cloud may be less valuable in an ephemeral environment. When we think about our traditional CIA triad, we can contrast it with the DIE triad, distributed, immutable, ephemeral. Establishing persistence in an ephemeral instance is not really persistence at all. There are other things in the cloud that are more persistent, though, things like an IAM policy. And so one of the ways that we see adversaries establishing persistence in cloud is by granting themselves privileged roles in an environment. In this case, uh, this is a finding type that we've seen before uh, with Event Threat Detection and Security Command Center. It actually takes us all the way back to our launch of this service many years ago when we granted an audience member uh, live in the room editor on a project. In this case, our end-to-end -end testing uh, was doing the same thing, and we were detecting it in very close to real time. But let's say, uh, how else might somebody establish persistence? Well, I said that instances are ephemeral, but the ways that they spin up and spin down give us access to things like SSH keys across an environment. And now because things are managed from the orchestration layer, from the control plane, we can add uh, you know, SSH keys through the API. In this case, the adversary has added an SSH key, which will be good for them across the instances in the fleet. And we were able to detect that as well. So what you saw today were a number of different finding types, all generated inside of Security Command Center, all generated in close to real time, powered by our unique understanding of logs, our uniquely good understanding of Google Cloud, and our uniquely powerful instrumentation through the cloud hypervisor. Well, listeners, thanks for sticking with me through the demo. I hope this was an engaging and interesting look at the ways that Security Command Center Premium can help detect some of the ways that adversaries first get access to environments, second, attempt to exfiltrate data, Third, use and abuse your resources to achieve crypto mining. And fourth, establish persistence in your environment. Throughout, we focused on how SCC Premium is really focused on the particularities of GCP itself and how we use our position as the Google Cloud provider to give you the highest quality threat detection for your environment. You can learn more about Security Command Center Premium by checking out our documentation page as well as our product page. And of course, on the topic of threat detection in cloud, you can check out parts one and two of our Threat Detection in Cloud blog post that Anton Chubakin and I did. You can listen to the podcast that Anton and I release on threat detection, among many other topics, every Monday, cloud.withgoogle.com slash cloud security slash podcast. And of course, thank you for joining us for this month's security talks. Really appreciate your time today, folks.